I'm Jim Roble, and this is Garage Customs. On today's episode, I'm going to take you through one of the topics that I get asked the most about. It's, uh, Tim, I'm looking to get into fabrication, getting into welding. I want to build some cool projects like you do. What kind of welder should I purchase first? A MIG, a TIG, a stick? Well, here's an economical answer to that question. The new Everlast Power MTS 200, full 200 amp machine that is MIG, TIG, and stick. Let me take you through some of the accessories and take you through the setup and we'll even do some welding with a new unit. Everything you see here is what's included with the unit as it's delivered to your door. So here we have our TIG package with a package of consumables with everything you need to weld except for your tungsten. It does come with a foot pedal. The torch is a SR26 and it does have a torch trigger on it for 2T and 4T functions. So that's pretty nice and real versatile. Next we have a very nice MIG gun. We have our stinger for stick welding. We have a very nice ground and then right here we have one of the best regulators I believe in the industry. I've uh, actually put these on all of my machines now because they hold pressure and hold it tight. So with argon and the steel mix being so expensive these days, it's very nice to have a machine that if you happen to forget to turn the bottle off, that it doesn't bleed down overnight. Um, from what I see, I turn a bottle off and I actually get about five days of pressure that it still holds before it bleeds everything off. So it's a really tight system and I like that. Another thing that I really enjoy with this package is this comes with an operations manual and this is something I've set up several different machines and not all machines come with a manual so it's nice to have a paper manual that I can keep and refer back to in the shop so uh, really nice and worth its weight in gold. Getting you through the setup first thing we're going to do is this machine comes supplied standard with a Euro Connect. Now this isn't something funky that you can't get other torches or anything for. Uh, Bernard and several other units are available in the Euro Connect if you didn't happen to like the standard gun so you're not stuck with what you got. But hooking up a Euro Connect I really like. It's super simple. Basically just plugs in, indexes, and screws down. In the MIG process we'll take our work clamp also known as a ground cable which is basically our standard nice copper line that has a high spring tension and we'll connect this to either our workpiece or to our welding table. And this gets installed on the negative side. We just go in and give it a turn and it locks it down. That's it for the MIG process. Now let's feed some wire in it. As we look at the machine I've opened up the left hand panel exposing where we load our MIG wire few things that I'd like to note inside of here, these are things that you would find on more expensive machines. We have an all aluminum drive box. Some more or less expensive machines are made out of plastic, so this right here will give you years of trouble free service. Another thing to note is we do have a burn back knob, and what burn back is, is when you let go of your torch trigger, it'll actually give it a slight spike, burning it back to your desired start point again. So that's two little things that's really nice inside of this machine that just shouts quality to me. Now we're set up, I'm going to load up some solid steel wire. So you'll note right here that we're set up for that and we're going to use a 7525 steel mix. So let's load some wire. You will note right here in our operating instructions that we'll set this up with the ground on the negative side for solid steel wire and then this bus terminal over here will be positive positive and that's located right here on the machine so we're set up for that if we were going to run a flux core wire then we would take this bus bar and move it up to here positive negative and then we would take the ground and move it from the negative side to the positive side so refer to your operators instructions for that and that'll help you out so I made a trip to Home Depot and I bought some 30 thousandths MIG welding wire. And why I chose 30 thousandths because that gives me the best range for this machine. I can run anywhere from 50 to 200 amps and be within the limits of this. If you were wanting to weld something thinner then I would drop down to some 023. That will take you from 30 to 100 amps. 
and then above that would be the 040 and 045 which will take you from about 80 to 200 amps so that being said I chose some ER70 S6 and basically what we're going to do is load this in We'll index that on the pin. Wire loads in from the bottom. Push this through. I've already selected the 30 thousandths or 8 millimeter drive roller. We'll feed that in. And I'll just feed this down, get it started good. Clip this down, our spring tensioner. Then I'll install this, and that's it for doing the wire. So now with that run, I'll remove this nozzle, take the supplied wrench that comes with it, and I'll take the tip off. Now what we'll do is we'll turn the machine on, we'll select MIG on the front panel, and I'll squeeze the trigger that removed and we'll feed the wire through. Install our tip again and then we'll install our nozzle again and we're ready to weld. Inside the machine we have the down pressure on our drive rollers. So let me show you how I adjust that. What I do is I get a wooden block and I come in about a 45 and I want to apply pressure and get this to curl. That makes sure that I have enough down pressure and not too much. I don't want to kink the wire so I want to make sure the wire is not coming out flat. So we'll see if we can get away with a little less. We just want enough to curl it. And we got a really stout roller so we'll call that good. Trim to length, and now let's hook up our regulator. Here we have the regulator. I've already put the barb on and attached the hose to it. Now to the back of the MTS, right here we have the barb, an on-off switch, power cord, and our fuse panel. We'll just take this, put that on there, and then we'll tighten that down well with a screwdriver and we'll be good to go. Note that the regulator does read in liters per minute, not cubic feet per hour. Now to the front of the machine and it's pretty self-explanatory. I'll run you through it really quick. Select the process that you want. We're in MIG mode, so up to MIG volts. It's on a rheostat, so it's infinitely tunable. Next up would be our wire speed, same thing, rheostat. MIG waveform, so it allows you to tune in your characteristic you want out of your weld puddle. We have 2T, 4T, and foot pedal modes in the TIG operation. Upslope, downslope, preflow, and postflow in the TIG. That's pretty much it for the basic run through. Now let's build the torch. I'll take the collet body and I'll install this into the SR26 air cooled torch. Screw that down. Then I'll take our collet, drop it in. A sharpened tungsten. Drop that down. I'll select a long back and a number four cup. And we'll set our tungsten length. Usually I like about three sixteenths, uh, well between maybe an eighth and three sixteenths, depending on what you're doing. And that's it. We have our torch trigger. And we're ready to weld. Now attaching the TIG torch to the unit, we'll take this and we'll remove our ground clamp, our work clamp, from the negative side. And the TIG torch gets installed on the negative side. Lock it down, then we'll run our gas cable. And this is like a standard quick disconnect air compressor thing. Just pushes in, locks down, and then remove it. Simple as that. Then we'll take our work clamp, or ground clamp, and that gets installed on the positive side and gets locked down. The pedal that comes standard with the Everlast Power MTS 200. You don't have to pay anything extra for it, it's included with the package, and for me, I really like welding with a foot pedal. 
Let's take you to hooking that up to the machine. For hooking up the foot pedal, it's pretty simple. We'll just hook this in, index it, push it in, and lock it down. Also note that on the torch, we have another fitting. So you can choose to use either the 2T or 4T mode in the torch trigger that's located on the torch. And that would be your connector that comes right out of your torch hose. Or you can choose the foot pedal. For me, the foot pedal gives me a lot more control than welding. And I prefer not to use a torch trigger unless maybe I'm upside down and backwards up in a car. And, you know, don't have room to run the foot pedal with my hip or something. So it gives you a lot of versatility here with this machine. I just dialed in some quick settings and went to start to welding. So this is my first two inches of welding with this machine. Those of you that have a trained ear, you'll notice that I could turn up and give it a little bit more wire, but I got great penetration and the bead has actually a nice looking characteristic to it. Now that I've taken you through the setup and we've welded our first couple of inches in the MIG process, I would like to talk a little bit about why I chose the Everlast Power MTS 200 over some of the other competition. Number one for me is it utilizes an aluminum drive roll housing. I just kind of feel that the aluminum is going to hold up a little bit better than a plastic unit will over the years. Number two is for my $1,100 price point, I get a foot pedal included. Now I can vary the amperage and it also comes standard with a 2T and a 4T torch trigger on the TIG torch. Now this is a DC unit only, so normally that would exclude us from welding aluminum. But this unit comes spool gun capable. So I ordered at an additional cost the aluminum spool gun for it. Now I can come in and instead of trying to work in the TIG process with one of my other units, I can come in with my gloved hand and I can hold things in place and zip them in place and maybe I want to pull those off and bring them back to the ta table and use my 200DX to weld it up. Or maybe I just want to do a real nice production run weld with it and I can come and MIG up an aluminum weld with it. So that's why I chose Everlast unit over some of the others. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Stay tuned for further episodes and I'll take you through some of the other processes of the machine and we'll really get, get into it and get to know it. Thank you for watching Garage Customs. I'm Tim Roble and I'll catch you here next time.